Hi, I'm Sally Williams, MARTOG LCM Ambassador, and I'm here at the MARTOG Processing Plant in Victoria, Australia. I want to explore the state of the Australian recycling packaging and manufacturing industry at a company level and how companies are providing sustainable solutions to brand owners and the consumer for the future. Worldwide, the problems caused by the growing amount of plastic waste being dumped into our environment have almost reached breaking point. The devastating effects that discarded single-use plastic could have on our environment can only be described as catastrophic and if nothing is done and we don't come up with sustainable solutions soon, it won't be long before the contamination begins to directly affect us all. However, we've reached a turning point and thanks to MARTOG and other visionary recycling companies, there is now a sustainable solution that could extend the life cycle of these valuable polymers indefinitely. The answer is MARTOG LCM and in this series of videos I'm going to be introducing you to these amazing products and to some of the key people who've developed the process that will keep discarded and unwanted packaging out of landfill and our ecosystems for generations to come. And I'm with Austin and Hi. hello and Ben from MARTOG. Hi, Let's talk about the state of the recycling industry here in Australia. Let me start off by saying that that polymers or plastic as we've come to know it, they're very much a victim of, of their own success. Yeah. You know, in reality for 70 years we've been benefiting from plastic in some way, shape or form. It keeps our fruit fresh, has many different uses, hence why you know, it, it largely dominates the packaging industry. And we haven't complained really about it, we've loved using plastic as our Correct. As our and packaging. and yeah. really it, it, it's just once we discard the material mm. and we forget about it, that's where it becomes problematic. That's when it starts becoming a problem. Exactly, yeah. but, but really there is a reason why it is being used um, into the packaging industry. And look, the, the issue that we face, Sally, is you know, we've become complacent over the years. We've, we've become accustomed to exporting our waste offshore. Um, and what I mean by that is we've, we've collected our waste, we've bailed it up, we've put it on a ship, and we've sent it off to another country. We've sent and, it essentially, away. and essentially made it their problem. But as you'll be aware, from 2018, the Chinese National Sword Campaign came into effect. Subsequently, other countries followed suit. Mm, well, it was a big wake-up uh, call it for was, all of us. It was. We've got a stockpile of waste that is growing at a pretty rapid rate. It's thousands of tonnes of plastic every day. We need to find a solution for that waste that isn't putting it into the ground or shipping it offshore and, you know, and letting it enter our environment, which we've all seen. So we've got okay. to take our own responsibility we for do. it, don't we? We do. But the good news is, Plastic is inherently recyclable. So the whole notion around plastic being a single-use material, it's, it's false. We've been recycling for years, um, and the beauty is, you know, you only have to look as far as PET as an example to see that this, re this material, as a post-consumer material, can be recycled back into food-grade resin, suitable again for the same application from which it originated from, let's use bottle to bottle for example, mm -hmm. and into an abundance of, of other applications. So we've now got an opportunity to direct that waste plastic through the recycling facility and use it back out into consumer goods. And it's so, so important for you know, the, the circular economy. Um, the two main elements are, we've got a waste crisis, but the other element is carbon emissions, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with. Absolutely. Now I can tell you right now that where PET, recycled PET, is used in place of virgin PET, there is a carbon saving of up to 79% less than the virgin counterpart, so it's huge. And Austin, where does MARTOG fit into all of this? Well Sally, MARTOG's been around since 1975, so we've been around for 45 years now. You know your stuff. Yeah, we know our stuff. And we've seen a lot. We've seen the industry change a lot over that time. You know, we, we've started f from very humble beginnings now to being able to cater for almost all segments of the plastics industry in Australia. So commodity trading of polymers, commodity compounding, engineering compounding, rotational moulding powders, colour and additive master batches, all the way through to our sustainability division, MARTOG LCM. Yeah, well let's talk about that. How and why did you go down the path of sustainability? Well, that's an interesting one as well. And really, we've been in recycling, if you will, since 1975. It's really been a part of our DNA since, since the very start. Mm, which is great to hear, good yeah. for you. And look, we formalised it in 2006 with MARTOG LCM, which yep. stands for Life Cycle Management. And that business was really uh, created on the basis that we would bring back waste from our customers for our other resins. 
we'd recycle it and we'd turn it back into a, an industrial resin that could be used back into to a, a really well-established industry in Australia. And we're all consumers and we all play a role in this. We are. We've got the technology and the equipment today to process post-consumer waste material. It doesn't need to go into the ground. It is inherently recyclable. We can take that in, we can recycle it, and we can reuse it. And that model is so important, it really is. We can't continue down the linear path of make, use, dispose. So why speak out now? Why act now? Well, Sally, we feel like we have an obligation. You know, we have 45 plus years of experience in the plastics industry, and from our perspective, you know, we see it as being a really simple problem and a simple solution. We really are at a crossroads. We can continue down the path we're on, which is, it's unsustainable. It just, it sees us consuming plastic in a linear manner. It sees millions of tonnes of plastic ending up in landfill. It sees recycling capacity being underutilised in Australia, and we don't want that. So we take the other path, which is the more sustainable path, the green path. The only path? Yep. Well, that's the way we feel about it. Yeah. You know, it sees less plastic in the environment. It sees less plastic in our landfills. It sees increased recycling rates, more jobs for Australians. The crucial part of it is educating the consumer and empowering the consumer that when they're standing there at that point of sale in a supermarket or wherever they are, that they're understanding their part that they play in this. That mm -hmm. by choosing the sustainable path, the recycled content path, they're contributing to all of the benefits of the circular economy. And really, it's, it's, it's so important. It really does start and end with the consumer. Yeah, and it's all about the education. Because I think once the consumer understands that, they'll look for it. A lot of consumers these days, when they talk to me, they want to be more responsible. They want to find it straight away. They want to look underneath and say, great, recycled good, ticks that box for me. And Austin, at Martog, you have your own brand of recycled PET. Yes, we do, Sally. Marpet is our 100% recycled PET. It's food contact approved. We have three vacuarema lines here in Dandenong producing 23,000 tonnes per annum of capacity. And it's what we want to focus on through these three videos. We want to talk about the process and we want to talk about how it can contribute to the circular economy and talk a little bit about some of the products that are also integral in that, in that story as well. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'm really keen to have a look inside the factory here and see how it all works. Well, let's, let's go for a wander out the back. Mm. We'll take you into the R&D facility, introduce you to the team and uh, we'll go from there. Great. So here we are in the lab and I'm with Craig Riley and Craig, I believe you've been here for a very long time at Martol. Sally, I have been there. 40, 40 years. Goodness me, oh my goodness me, that is incredible. You would have seen so many changes over the years. So tell me about your research with Recycled PET. Recycled PET started back in uh, 2016. Um, today we've got 23,000 tonnes worth of conversion capacity and um, and then we're moving forward. So what sort of packaging are we talking about here when we're thinking consumer and shopping in a supermarket? When you walk down the shopping aisles, soft drink, water, meat packaging, fruit packaging, berry packaging, cheese packaging. Okay, so Healthy. tell me about market. what is it? Let's, let's talk about that. That's what it looks like. Um, that's, uh, that's a chopped up mm. soft drink bottle. Uh, we turn it there into that which is the pellet form. In the pellet form. Mm -hmm. Craig, a lot of people ask me about glass. So what's the difference? What do you think? What's the difference? Well, mm. plastic fantastic. It's a, uh, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's durable. It's good job that wasn't the glass one, Sally. <laughs> it's durable. Um, it's lightweight. Um, it's circular. Uh, we can reprocess that time and time again and turn it back into a bottle. The future is strong. So Martog's very much behind it. Now I want to talk about cost. There's a cost. There's yeah, a there, difference. There is a cost. You just have to accept that, that uh, you can't uh, pick material up from the curbside, put it through a process, reprocess it, send it back out the door and expect that it's going to cost the same as virgin polymer. It, it just doesn't. It just it doesn't. can't be done. The, the consumer just wants to go shopping and find that it's there and it's really easy to read. Great. Recycle. PET. Fabulous. Yes. Marpet. Great. And understand. And understand why yes. it might cost that a little bit more and yeah, I think that's fantastic. In the next video, I'll be finding out how this R&D is put into practice and the vital role we can all play in achieving the goal of prolonging the life cycle of these valuable polymers indefinitely.